prediction. Pain. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. We're We're adding this guy. Just another go down with the courage. All skill and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a place for the football teams. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show of your dreams. Ain't no bias. Chris Zorich breaking truth. Traded in the golden helmet in the past for a suit. With the take, never lies. College ball, he's a stoop. Breaking the top 16, not the top 32. I don't mean to cut you off like a Zorvis jersey, but you ain't really grinding unless the jersey dirty. Hit the running back like a Mack truck behind the 30 yard line. It's game time, my team riding off the sideline. You look line. at Chris like this with a fact checklist. Going over college teams like a 50 scientist. Steve streaking from his head like in his playing days. Super 16 poles on the show straight away. It's the FBS, the best of the best from the ACC to the SEC. Pac 12, Big 10, Mount West, Sun Belt, and the Big 12. Open your eyelids, who the best? Best like the clock. Super 16 is the cream of the crop. College football time of year don't stop. With Christopher Zurich, just another go down with the courage. Heart, skill, and will. Bringing you the best 16. Serving up a plate for the football fiends. Breaking the best 16 college teams. Football fans, it's the show of your dreams. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Super 16 Poll Show. This is week two, and as you can see, I'm still proud of our Fighting Irish, even though it was a horrendous game, but I will have that breakdown later for you. Number 47, Notre Dame. Number 40. So this is the first time. So you can jump in here. This is the first time <laughs> Notre Dame has not been in the top 25 in like a thousand years. Oh my god. I actually think it's it's like 60, but it's like a thousand years. <laughs> thousand years. A thousand years, yes. yes. A thousand years. Yes. Ancient alien type years. Yes. Notre Dame has not. Yes. No, number 47. That was hilarious. Thank you very much for We're that. We're going to play was... it again later, no, but you don't have to. I had to surprise to... you. <laughs> yes. No, that I was appreciate hilarious. you still rocking the swag of it's Notre Dame. It's the shirt. It's the shirt that you wear, you know, the the, the first game of the year. Um, apparently, That's I didn't have it on that day. However, I had some other responsibilities, which was actually pretty cool. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I got you. I got you. This is a, a new thing there he started. Is. There he with, is. With uh, having a alumni analyst from from each team there, and NBC chose me to do it. Uh, I'm sure it's because they've they've seen this show, it so they understand that, that. It, it has to be. It Definitely. Has to be. Has so to be because of they that. realized that I do have some football knowledge, some college football knowledge, and uh, it was great because I had a chance to hang out with um, my Bradshaw, Bradshaw, who apparently his rings were literally took up his whole hand. My national, my itty bitty national championship ring could actually fit inside his <laughs> Super Bowl ring. My my shit was that small. So, but I mean, uh, I digress. And Josh, I was rocking the kilt. The kilt. Which, I got a the kilt folks. heard round the world, bro. Well, here's the thing, man. Now, so this that was totally kind of uh kind of unexpected. I wasn't planning on it. They they, they talked about showing have, showing some spirit, which I, I was gonna do. And then my boy Jerry Canada uh had about four kilts with him that he was gonna tailgate with. And he was like, Chris, what about this? And I'm like, yeah, are you kidding me? That's a skirt. I'm not going to wear a kilt. And then all of a sudden, five minutes later, I was like, hmm, they said spirit. So it was the perfect color, matched my shirt and everything. And I went out there and rocked it. Dude, you you were brave. I don't think I could have done it. Yeah, you could. But you, you did could. it. 
No, I and it's just a couple million people watching. What what the hell, right? <laughs> I didn't know you were on the live actual show broadcast because I was uh, yeah. traveling and See? I'm so pissed. I would have been wow. texting you like, See? can you sneak in? You know, the I tape did. never lies, coach. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that would have definitely helped. <laughs> it I probably would have changed the course of, of the whole game. The whole the game, game. Which I can't wait to talk to later. But I know you have some awesome news you, you'd like to talk about. Oh, yes, Chris. Awesome well, well, hold news. on now. I, I still, yes. I'm still thinking about this. This is one of four for Cap's um, illustrious $5,000 dinner for the whole TTNL. Exactly. Staff. So we're one in. So yes, only sir. three to go till Detroit. <laughs> right. So I already texted Cap this morning. <laughs> you pissed. And I go... One down, one down, three more to go. <laughs> <laughs> and he, to his credit, hearted it. And I know he was doing his show. I try not to bother anybody on their shows, but everybody's doing shows now. Everyone's got a show. Chris is on national TV. Well, hey, man, kill know. who's better than you. And now you're on the Super 16 pole show. There you go. But yes, Chris, as I was fired up, I guess I'm too fired up for some Bears fans. What? They they just want to be fo you know floating on the seas of parades of winning one oh, game. Come on, man! I, a win's a win. Just celebrate the damn thing. Come on, man! I want to celebrate it, but I also have to call out some of the negative things because Please I've do. been right. Absolutely, like the rain, the, the rain, field. the puddles, the play calling, the gun runs, uh, your former tight end there not blocking. As well as you said, so I get, I guess that ruffled feathers, but I guess they don't know me because I don't care. I'm always going to look for the best for the Chicago Bears and that victory, albeit huge. That's how you want to kick off a season. And you saw the culture, you saw the coaching, and then buying into the culture of what most of I wouldn't say all of our guests, but most of our guests, including people in the national media that we've had on our show, keeping it 100 throughout the offseason, kind of snickered at Coach Eberflus and his hits philosophy, where we were embracing it because we knew how bent out of shape the culture was. And then you also saw you sharing the reality of truth in regards to what has happened historically, culturally with the Chicago Bears. So it's not like I'm barking up the wrong tree. You have to build on this win. And I believe the hustle hits philosophy, hustle, intensity, turnovers, scoring is important. And you saw it on display. If it wasn't for Eddie Jackson's turnover, how do you, how does that game play out? If it wasn't for Jalen Johnson's turnover, punching the ball out wearing number 33 it was it was kind of a uh, ironic i know you can hear my son fighting he doesn't want to do homework chris who does he wants that notre dame education <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to notre dame <laughs> <laughs> but yes a big win big win for the chicago bears and well, well Phil, hold pretty. on. Now, now, I also think that a lot of people don't don't like the whole hits thing, is because they always think about college like, hustling. They just assume that the pros they 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 always do that. Well, sometimes Please. they they don't. Speak and so on that, you man. you have to talk about that. You have to talk about going back to fundamentals. Sometimes you have to talk about running. You have to have you have to talk about um, getting that, that enthusiasm during practice and things like that. And, and folks don't want to hear that because. That's kind of like your old school, a college or high school coach, you know, hey, run to the ball, run to the ball. Well, guess what? When you run to the ball, good things happen. Dude, uh, I can't express how many years, you know, because I was on an old network before that and I preached this and I kind of got laughed at because it's what you said, that same kind of mentality over there, that that's old school. You can't get pros to do, to buy into. I go, bullshit, you can't. Right. 
the head coach sets the tone. Right. It doesn't matter what any Bill Parcells is an example of that. Bill Walsh, you think they were loafing on Walsh's watch? <laughs> no, they weren't. But he built a belief system, and I said this on our show, and I think Eberflus is tapping into that, and you could see it. The guy I had the most reservations for, Chris, was Eddie Jackson from right. Alabama. Right, right. And he has embraced <laughs> this because, you know what? Some human beings need to be pushed. They might have re reached a certain level or they sure. f thought themselves a certain way. And then all of a sudden you get this old man, this guy with a gray beard yelling at you and really coming from a place where he wants what's best for you. Right. Because right. what's best for you is essentially what's best for the team. Of course. So if you have this kind of energy where you don't let anything go, you don't let this guy loaf, you don't let that guy loaf, and it becomes a culture. I said it way back when. Before they even hired Eberflus, give me a guy. We talked about Jim Harbaugh mm -hmm. because we knew he was maniacal right? and that he was going to get the most out of everybody. And if you didn't like it, get out, right. get out. And that's really the reality of where these guys are going. And to my point, Eddie Jackson makes just a tremendous play. A lot of people were clowning on him because he got run over into the end zone, but it was the defensive end's responsibility to at least, you know, you going against Debo Samuel with <laughs> Debo having a six-yard sprint right, at you. Right. Sometimes you're going to lose that. You right. know, it's the game of football. Low man wins, but sometimes the strong. I mean, you saw Saquon Barkley. Was he going to go down there on that two-point? <laughs> no, he wasn't. I don't care who was in front of right. him. Maybe Zorich would have stopped him. Nice. But the discipline, as Logan is saying, and – the, my father said this to me when I first started coaching Chris. He said, I don't care. We 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 lived in a two high school town and we were on the wrong side of the athletic tracks. Okay. So we were working with a bunch of kids that never played. Where the Pop Warner kids, they all went to the other side of town. Right. right. Now you're teaching these kids from freshmen, all the and yeah, every now and then you get a kid that has some athletic talent, but you're basically teaching and teaching right. and teaching. So what do you got to do to win games? A, you got to teach. B, you have to be in tremendous condition. Because of your point, if you hustle, if you are physical and you tackle, you will win games. It's just, it is something. And if you are in the NFL and you can get that, you're going to be cooking with gas there. And I think the Chicago, and I said this, Shane said it. Uh, we are big believers in it. The reality is this culture is going to be built on that track shoe. Get your track shoes ready comment. It's got to continue, though. So you go through this season. And next season, it's the same thing. So now all of a sudden, you've got these pillar pieces in place, whether it be, you know, if you re-sign Roquan or whatever. He sets the tone and the expectation for everybody looking around. Oh, oh, shit. Just like you as a rookie going in, you see Richard Dent and all these guys slacking off. Then you're going to be like, I, I guess I could slack off. I, I thought right. I was going to come here and work my butt off. But Wani's running a camp for counselors here. So <laughs> we're doing this. And then the culture drops. So right. it's got to be consistent. First game. San Francisco, all the hype. A lot of people are going to point to the rain, but both teams are playing in the rain. A lot of people exactly. are going to point to a lot of different things. A rookie quarterback, a guy playing. Well, Justin was a rookie with a neglectful coach. It was a beautiful thing to see the Chicago Bears come out on top. And uh, uh, one last point, and I think we all can attest to this. I said it to Claudio. Uh, I know Shane mentioned cars texting the same kind of thing to him. I've been watching the Bears my whole life, and I see these games, and I see them losing, come back, and then fumble and lose. And then lose. Right? Right. That's the and whole thing. Right. The whole thing. Yesterday, there was no letdown mm -hmm. because they mm -hmm. were in tremendous condition. They yep. believed, and they were disciplined. 
and they played the game out and finished. Huh? And then you could dive. There was no right. club dub. It was a swamp dive. <laughs> Soldier God. Field swamp dub. God, there was no club dub. Exactly. So great start for the Bears. And again, today I was listening to his presser. I know I said that was the last thing. That's okay. But Let me see. I loved the fact that he had everybody in the room, practice squad, taxi squad, whatever he called them, veteran squad, everybody watching the tape, grading everyone. He gives a sheet out, Chris. This is how many loafs you did in the game. This is the time frame with which we caught you loafing. So that tells me not only are you on top of it, those coaches are going back. They're watching the tape. Each position yep. coach is grading these guys, giving, yep. handing it in. Head coach is looking at the tape. Yep, this guy's low. Now you're being held accountable. In front of the whole team. In front of the whole team. And that's how it should be. That's how it always should be because there's no bigger motivator than your peer. Sure. There's no big, no one wants to be laughed at in front of their peers. Just ask Jackal. He, well, he can tell he, you all about that. Here's the funny thing about it. And you look at kind of the, the the salaries in that room. Yeah. And you you think about, oh, well, this person's a professional athlete. He won't loaf. You, you think this, you think that. And in reality, guys do. And oftentimes, if the play isn't going their way, Eh, you know, they may kind of take a little jog or something like that, right? Exactly. Well, now you're able to kind of hold everybody accountable, which is so easy, right? I mean, and if other coaches did this, you, you would think they would because it's so easy. All they did, all he had to do was ask each position coach, hey, watch your guy. When he loafs, let me know. Exactly. And I mean, how hard is that? And so now the coach is able to put together his own film, his own tape, of guys loafing, and I guarantee you, let's say it was 16 guys are loafing. Yeah. Next game, it'll be eight. Exactly. Next game, it'll be four. After that, guess what? No one's loafing. And that didn't take you yelling at anybody. That didn't take some you calling somebody in the office, you finding somebody. All that exactly. did, as you mentioned, all it did was use that that that, that, that peer influence over guys that are making, you know, a gazillion dollars a year. Chris, when I, I met, I don't want to word this because I don't want to be too, but when I went and visited my uncle Sam Rotigliano, who coached the Cleveland Browns in the late seventies, early eighties, the cardiac kids, we were eating dinner. And it's like one of the first time, you know, as a, a a man, as a father, that I'm talking with him because I was, always saw him when I was young. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a man, so we're talking. He's like, Philip, there's a lot of shoe salesmen in the NFL. You can't believe these are old school boy friends, hired friends. They don't know football. They don't know football and technique and teaching and effort. And energy and account, they don't know any of that stuff. Like I could hire you tomorrow, you would run circles around these guys. The simple things go unnoticed. It's the simple things that accountability does and peer pressure and that kind of stuff that get motivating factors out of these players. It's it's the key. Right. And if you are the real leader of men, think about Lawrence Taylor. Nobody was a better pass rusher that I've seen than him. Sure. Right? I I've never seen it. I mean, that guy could flip a switch like nobody. But Bill Parcells knew how to put that pressure on him in front of his peers. He mm -hmm. talked about it. He knew how to push the buttons to get the most out of him. Now you could say whatever it is you want about him in his personal life, but everybody has their demons. Sure. But the reality of the football player is motivated by that coach. And he, he could be considered the Michael Jordan of pass rushers. Okay. He still needed right. somebody to right. push his ass mm -hmm. to get him there. And he'll tell you that if it wasn't for Parcet, he'd probably be out of the league. One of those, you know, him, and I know him. big for nothings. 
athletic for nothings, <laughs> right? Probably the best player I ever coached didn't want to work. Where is he now? I don't even know mm. where he is. We know these guys. And unfortunately, it, we say it in, in life. The parents are 85% of the problem. Right, exactly. Oh, my exactly. son is so good. Why doesn't right. he play? <laughs> How much does he does he study his place? Right. No. Exactly. <laughs> That's why. These things will forever be whatever. I get fired up with it, Chris. But As you should. I, I think, love it. Love I it. think Coach Eberflus, finally, we're in good hands with the head coach. There's certain things that I'm going to criticize Coach Eberflus with. He, he should have went for two based on the math. Mm-hmm. The math should have said two. Mm-hmm. But you're 19, right? 19 to 10. It's already a two-possession game, so you right. win nothing or lose nothing if you kick a field goal, which you missed. It wasn't hindsight. Mm-hmm. It was go for two and be up 21-10. Or 2010, excuse right. me, 2010. That's, that's okay. You went to Hofstra, sorry. <laughs> Little Ivy. Hofstra might have beat Notre Dame yesterday. Oh! 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 oh. <laughs> Number 47, Notre Dame. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you very much, Shane. I appreciate that. Um, I How think did you know it, Shane had a hand in Was that. it uh, Jeremiah that put that up that said that Phil's kid is going to, if if he doesn't study, he's going to go to Alabama? That, that, was yeah, a little, was. that was something I saw, you know. Under the, <laughs> I understand. That was McGla- McLaughlin. Jeffrey. Thank you, McLaughlin. Yeah. He's Thank an you. Irish kid. Hey, there you go. There you go. Sorry, Jeffrey. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff's a big fan of you, Chris Zorich. I, I, love I it. met a lot of big Chris Zorich fans this weekend. Hey, in that. the store while you're shopping while while I was on national television in the kilt. Is that what you're saying? No, I first I coached my son. They had a jamboree flag football game. Nice on How Saturday morning. Then they did great. Okay, Tate, Tate uh, moved Tate to quarterback. He threw uh, uh, three touchdown son? passes. The coach is some of the quarterback? Okay. Listen, hey, um, I didn't okay, I'm the yeah, assistant I'm coach. Oh, now. okay, okay. Now, now you're the assistant. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Uh, I was impressed with my own son in that. Of course I didn't you were. I didn't think he could do You're just, what just talking about parents that said, like, oh my god, I'm just so I'm not that guy though. Like if my, apparently, my other son not. Chris, you, you my son. strings. You pull some strings and get your kid to be the starting quarterback. I don't know. I'm just I saying. Didn't pull I'm just saying. My other son runs counter, breaks it for like 30, and pull, twists his ankle. And he's yelling at me on the field. So there you go, Chris. It's your fault. It's your fault, Dad. <laughs> it's my fault. You got me running this counter. It's your fault. It's oh my it's your fault. See? Had, uh, he wouldn't get up. I had to carry him. It was a whole thing. So, oh, my gosh. Before you give me the Snagglesworth or whatever. The business? The business. Before I give you the yes. business. So, hopefully, Devin will be good this weekend. They play. They play their first games Saturday morning. So, then I was doing that. Then Steph had this thought of getting another dog. That's wow. where I was. But I was yeah. watching Notre Dame on my phone but the connection kept going in and out okay. on the peacock app on the peacock app sorry peacock sorry i i didn't have any i was just on the, the peacock network i don't have any control over it. i'm sorry yes and i i didn't get to see you one time one during time. that thankfully i, I thought it was like a special i thought it was like a special special i i do want to say i like coach um, I just lost his name. For, former uh, Ivy League quarterback, Dallas Cowboy backup quarterback. Why am I? Former Dallas Cowboy head coach. What's his name? Oh, On the broadcast. Oh, yeah, Jason Garrett. Yeah, coach did a coach great, Garrett, yes. I, he did a great job on the broadcast yes. of Notre Dame. Yes, he did. So there you go. Instead of Jack, I, I like Jason Garrett. 
Yeah, Jack. How? How? They both did well. Okay. Well, hey man, I'm part of the network. Listen, though, so you know, you're part of the network, right? The I don't NBC want to say anything network. back. Thank you. NBC and TTN. <laughs> you're everywhere. <laughs> you're everywhere. You're also ranking college football. Hello. 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 I don't know how I didn't remember Coach Jason well, Garrett. First of all, be- before we we get into it, last week I said that this is going to be just another boring week of right. teams playing people they shouldn't be playing. Oh my God, was I thousand percent wrong? I, I don't. I I got a whole Sun Belt section. I mean, there was this is probably one of the most exciting Sunbelt. weekends. Yes, the Sun Belt. Who the, the hell sun is belt, the Sun Belt? Baby. Yes, exactly. The Thank Sun you. Belt. Thank you. Oh, Where is that go. picture? I was looking for the. the... the, the oh, here the it is. Picture. There oh, they are. Oh, hello. The Zoriches. There you go. There's That's the kill. There's the kill. There's the kill. That was pregame. So I had to. Had to did you have a couple, a couple drinks or did you stay away from the drink because you were going on? I had one. TV. I had one. All right. I had one one drink. Loosen a, up. Loosen had, had you a, up. Had to loosen up a little bit. I had a little cigar. Did you know, think of me? Like Phil's going to be. Shoes? Gonna be breaking my balls. What was I thinking about you? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. I'm, I was thinking about you. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Sitting there with my hot ass wife, the yeah. Notre Dame game, and I'm thinking about you. She yeah, is a. Exactly. You gotta. You out kicked your coverage, and you I don't even play special teams. Coverage. Definitely, I keep my coverage. <laughs> definitely. So you had fun at least though there. I did. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I had a chance to hang out with some folks. But what I wanted to say though was that. How exciting was Saturday? I mean, it was just Amazing. absolutely insane. I mean, like literally from the beginning of the day to the end. So it was, oh, shit. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I wonder what she's talking about. Maybe you are kicking coverage as well? I hmm. believe that's what she's saying. Oh, I but. see. Okay. Okay. But at least we both could admit that. Yes. So it's good. It takes a man to admit that they are, that they are kicked the coverage. See? Yes. I've had the pleasure of meeting your beautiful wife, and she's well, very you. beautiful inside and out. And I had a chance to meet beautiful stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. Of, yes, exactly. There we go. Okay, that, that was the mutual <laughs> admiration club we, we, we just had there. So let, let's let's talk some goddamn football, okay? Talk some football, Hello. baby. Hello. It's the greatest game. Yes, it is. What are you and thinking, Ray? You want to kick off? It well, well no, I was just well, I just wanted to mention that because I, I I want to be real, and I, I had some games that were like, so, eh, you know, I had the Alabama Texas game, like I was like, eh, but that won't be one of one of the greatest, one of the best games. Absolutely, and I love I can't Alabama I, that game, dude. Alabama, Texas was on while we're looking at the puppies. My wife, oh are you God. paying attention to the puppies? Sure, I'm like, no, sure. I'm watching this <laughs> game. Like, this is unbelievable. Of course, I was cheering for Texas, but we'll get into that later. Yes, if you're just tuning in, the three time All American CBS Defensive Player of the Year, National Champion, College Football Hall of Famer, Walter Camp. All Americans not even on there. Well, wait, do, do we was. have a check? Can we write in there uh, NBC, NBC analyst? Sports <laughs> Analyst? NBC Sports Analyst. In a TTNL Analyst. College Football go. Analyst. Hello. Our guy. Ooh, yeah. Chris. What's that? Hmm. I like that. Maybe maybe we can put College Football Analyst now. Yes, we can. Since you, you have one under your belt, or your kilt, rather. Hello. Under my kilt. <laughs> However, I do want to know. I actually whipped out. I had shorts on underneath. But next week, I think I'm going to start a little tradition. Yes. Home games were kilts now. So next home game. Well, you kilt their chances of up. getting to the playoffs. So I killed them. I killed them. Okay. <laughs> Make that I a drop, them. please. I killed them. <laughs> wow. That's so bad. <laughs> I, I'm laughing at my own joke. I apologize. Yes, you are. Which, it was good, bad. though. I got... That is bad. That is you bad. killed them. Thank you, Jeff. Straight from New York. I, I, I do straight from New York. Jeff, the list could be long. There you go. 
Here we go. Chris Zorich. He could be longer. He's right. There's so much to talk about when it comes to Chris Zorich. Chris, every week, though, comes on here in the Super 16 Poll Show. I think Chris is the almost like the identifier. You know how like CVS, Walmart, all these, they start putting up Halloween stuff in August. Chris is that identifier, that point when you know football is back. The no, Super well, 16 poll show gets the tone it. started, gets it going. Chris, you wanted to say anything else because you were freezing. That's why I'm talking so much. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, that's the reason why I'm pretty sure you know, it's not all the time that you do that. <laughs> People don't freeze all the time, Phil. It's just hard yes. to crash up. I'm gonna get, get, I gotta get you this an Orbi internet system for you, the Wi-Fi system. It'll, I do have did, that. you do? Yes, it's the mesh system. I got it. The Orbi one though? Yes, the Orbi. There's, yes, Holy there's only shit. one company called Orbi. Well, it's actually Netgear, but the Orbi yes. is their is the, their prime? The, the so you mesh, have that? Mesh system, yes. I don't understand why you're freezing right now. Maybe because everybody's just trying to to call me, or they're they're all trying to. Oh yeah. Stand on the show. Is that what That's, it is? I would I would think so. Okay, there we go. There he is. Let's He's get back. this thing started, man. Let's go. You ready? Yeah. Number sixteen. You ready to rock? Number number four. Well, let's start with number forty-seven. Number. 47. Number 47. Notre Dame. Ooh, as I said, the first time they have not been in the rankings since like for the last 80 years. So, Do you want to talk years, about the years. game quick since they are number well, 47? I, I, will, I, will, I will. No, 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 no. Are you going to do it later? That's, 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 that's later, yes. yes. Okay. All right. Wow. Number 47 on your... Your you board, maybe brutal. number one in your heart, but number you forty-seven brutal. on the you Super Sixteen poll show. Let's go to number six. Let's jump ahead. Let's go to number, <laughs> number 16. sixteen. Number sixteen, Appalachian State. Hello, hello, hello. What the hell is going on in App State, dude? First of all, they interviewed the guy after the game. He was awesome, and then he he threw it out. He threw the gauntlet out. He said. We'll play anybody anywhere. I and love dude, it. no one's gonna want to play them again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and here's the reason why. So, first of all, my boy Rick had to be totally excited. I know Sheree's excited about this because now no one's gonna talk about App yes. State, Michigan, right? They're gonna talk about yes. App State, Texas AM now. So yes. I know that those guys are pumped about that. But here's the thing, and this is something that a lot of folks might not know. As an administrator, having a chance to work at Notre Dame. Having been a, been on the football scheduling committee, they pay the smaller schools tons of money to go to come play them, just as Notre Dame played paid Marshall to come. But Texas A&M paid App State probably over a million bucks to come in and play 1. them and get that win. Oh, it was oh did they yes one point two five million yeah there you out. go they paid him one point two five million to spank that ass. Yeah, that's the the running joke to come in there and beat that ass. But that's what you got to do to get these guys. Uh, I want to ask you though, how do you think uh, Jimbo Fisher, uh, boy over there, Nick Saban, had to be feeling a little bit better after the Texas game when he saw bit. the he apps? Was jacked. Are you kidding me? He was jacked after <laughs> seeing that score. Man, he was, he's, first of all, he wiped his brow like, oh, my God, I can't believe I survived this. Yes. And then he was like, yeah, buddy, yeah. <laughs> so now, of course, the game – now, and I think I even mentioned it last week. I mean, now that game, I think it's October 10th or something like that, you know, really isn't that big of a deal because, I mean, you know. All the hype on Texas A&M. Is that hilarious? All the recruiting hype, Dude, all that I, hype. I mean, Texas A&M is not a hard – I mean, it's an extremely hard place to play. I mean, they had the whole 12-man thing. They got the whole thing the night before the game. I mean, that's one of my on my bucket list. Yeah. Is to go down to College Station. That's, that's College Station, right? Yes, it is. To go and in, in, in experience kind of that experience. So the idea 
that this ragtag team went down there from the Sun Belt, went down there and spanked that ass. I mean, that's crazy. Crazy. Uh, outrageous. I kept checking the score to see. And sure enough, by the time I got to my father's house later that evening, he was so excited about App State. Can you believe it? It's just one of those stories. And to your point, it's like the bookmark now has moved up. Hmm. Now well, it's no, Texas exactly. A&M. It's exactly. no longer Michigan. That's too far away now. And, App but, State. Here's the downfall for them, though. And this, this is going to be the hard thing, is that now no one's going to want to play them, right? So the, so that that buy money that yeah. they go out and enjoy, that that, that will instantly kind of Do you think they up. can publicize their efforts to try to play some of these teams? Well, and I'm sure they will, but at the end of the day, I mean, no one's going to call them anymore. That's because that's, no one wants to be no one wants to be the highlight of Sports Center on ESPN getting their ass kicked by App State. Who's in the Sun Belt? It just doesn't happen. You're right. Which, which is why it's out the hey, we'll play anybody anywhere because now that that money's drying up, you know. Right. And I I think. I looked at the schedule. I think they only have two bye games this year, which I think in the past they've had like three. So it's already hard for them to kind of get those opportunities. But, I mean, even even if you look at last week against uh, North Carolina, they almost beat them. Right. That's why they're ranked in my poll because I think they deserve to be there. Are you kidding me? Storage putting them at amazing. number 16. Absolutely amazing. And on top of that, uh, game day is yep. going to freaking be there, man. And I don't know if he, I saw a whole bunch of stuff. My, my boy Keith uh, sent me something that um, they were partying in, what is it, Boone, North Carolina? Yeah. And dude, they're oh like God. partying you in the streets that? And stuff. That was hilarious. It's crazy, to be honest. They play Troy yes. this week. Then the 24, James Madison. I played dude, James they, Madison. How do you think – I mean, dude, game day is going to be down there. Everybody in the in, in the three counties around them, they're, they're going to be there. They're going to have the largest audience ever. Unbelievable story. College football. It never disappoints. Neither will it do it here app state debuts on the zorich poll there we go number, very exciting number very 16 exciting. let's go to number 15 number 15 tennessee now these guys are also new to the poll yes um, they are they wound up playing a great game as well I was shocked. Didn't think it was going to happen. I know Pitt was, uh, they're supposed to be really awesome good this year. Game. But it was incredible, man. And, and here's the thing, man. Pitt had two really back to back good games, man. They had the uh, the back air brawl. Yep. And, and they had this game. I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it's going to be a rough season for them. But I mean, it was exciting to watch. I mean, these were games that I was like, eh, you know, eh. But wound up being a good game, man. Were you able? Because you were at Notre Dame. Were you were you in the parking lot, or did you go over to the Zorich Experience House? I, I was all over. I was I was on the field. We were watching the green room. I saw the Alabama in the green room. I was in the parking lot again. I was at the game. I mean, I was all over. Oh, you were all over the place. Yes, I was. Green room. Look at you. Do they did hey, they man. feed you well in the green room? Oh, yes, they did. Jesus. Hey, man. Didn't, didn't call your boy to come join you, I see. Well, because you're too were, busy you with were, the puppies. You're looking at puppies. Aww. <laughs> Listen, Aww. did you see uh, Edwin? He's saying that he's telling you, he's guaranteeing Notre Dame will go 10 and 2. Oh, I love it. Mark my words. Okay, Edwin. Tell I got you, my brother. You don't even have to tell me. He, he, he sees you now, Edwin. I'm just concentrating on Kale. I'm, that, I'm just concentrating on Kale. Now, honestly, are you worried though about the coach in regards to what you saw with it's Scott? Two Frost? games, come on! I'm just I'm asking because Ed. Okay, first of all, first of all, Scott Frost lost a whole bunch of games. Yes, he Parker lost Spain last lost season. Two. I'm sorry, he lost three. 
as the head coach who lost three games. Really? He's he's 0 for 3 as a head coach. That is oh wow. That, okay, that, that's correct. That means what happens when you lose three games. Yes, you're 0 and 3. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you think you get fired after three? There's no way it's gonna happen. I want you to speak on it. No, speak first of all, people. Luke Holtz's first year, he lost seven games. He was five and seven his first year. This team comes into the this is my pushback. This team comes in ranked number five. However, you said it. You thought that was a little too high. You Very put high. them at number seven. They go out there. They lose their first opener to Ohio State. It wasn't like they played poorly and got blown out 58-6 or something. It felt like they were battling in that. We saw moments, and then they come back next week at home against Marshall of the Sun Belt Conference, and you expect them to lay the wood, lay the lumber, dominate, show who you are, and they don't. So a lot of okay. alumni. So, since we're going to talk about it, you want to talk about it now, we can. I'm sorry. It That's okay. kept popping okay. up here. I mean, you know, you, you yes. want to know. I understand. So here's my take on it. So surprisingly enough, if you watched my comments after the NBC broad, national broadcast, when I, was, yes. when I was wearing a kill, remember that? <laughs> yes. Um, I mentioned uh, <laughs> poor tackling. Missed tackles, offensive, defensive line, did horrible. And they had way too many turnovers, and they had uh, 219 yards rushing. So you combine all that, you're going to lose. And what does Marcus say? In the press conference, like about five minutes after I said it, not that he was listening to what I said, but five minutes after that, he talked about offensive, defensive line were horrible. They, they obviously have to improve. But the first thing that he did say, which I give him a lot of credit, is that this is Notre Dame's team. I'm the head coach here, so the, the, the loss is on my shoulders. I'm taking full responsibility, we, which which we've – historically, that has not been the case. So that was a really good point. But then really? he, t- he started to talk about, you know, the, the, the inefficiencies that happened during the game, right? I mean, you can't have a pick six. You can't have – three turnovers and expect to win. I totally you can't allow 219 yards rushing and three expect turnovers, to win. a quarterback to a team that was un- unranked unheard of. Right. So it's also the idea of them spending, I don't know how many days after the loss of, or after the loss to Oklahoma state in the bowl game to two weeks ago, it was all Ohio state. And Marcus went there. So there's a lot of hype. There was a lot going on, riding on that game. So th- they spent the whole offseason talking about that. I mean, you know, they're they're running gassers. And, you know, they 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 ended it with, you know, beat Ohio State or whatever it was, right? So you come close in that game, but you lose. You're upset. This is an emotional high. And now you, you got to play Marshall, like, how do you get those right. players up for that? It's t- and, and that they responsibility gonna... is to the coaches. I mean, yeah. I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will, you know, talk about that as well. And as far as the coaches go, understanding that a lot of the staff is brand new, okay, to the, the, the ND environment. Yes, we have a lot of experience there, but the hype that comes around their name is no joke. I mean, you have your own damn TV station, okay? So the idea that you have to be on every week, regardless of who you're playing, is something that's very serious. I mean, you are going to get the best of Navy. You're going to get the best of Mars. You're going to get the best of Cal. You're going to get the best teams in the country, the the, the best team, the best out of the teams that come to play you. I don't care who they are. So that's another factor. I'm not, I'm not making excuses. I mean, it's the coach's fault for not getting them ready. But the idea that that they're in, 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 in a new environment where everything is win or lose for them, and I think they – I think the, the players were kind of on that, that, um, that emotional roller coaster after that huge loss to Ohio State, after they thought they were going to win, right? Because they went right. to that locker room up. And I know that in the back of their minds, they were like, what the hell? 
wait a minute, we weren't supposed to be up. Whoa, whoa, shit, we weren't supposed to be up. What the hell's going on? And then, of course, the coach has to kind of diffuse that. Zero, zero, you, you know, you go out there, and I was like, well, hey, you know, now we we, we know we, we can stand with these guys. All of a sudden, the, they just start rolling on and just beat the crap out of them in the second half. So the, so that was kind of an emotional um, – uh, what, 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 what word am I looking for? An emotional kind of let down. Let the, exactly. Be, because they felt that they were in the game after they didn't think they were going to be in it. And then all of a sudden they lose that game. And so they come back from Marshall. I mean, who's Marshall, right? I mean, who who's the Sun Belt? Well, guess what? And I said it on the broadcast. I said it halftime and at the end of the game, the better team won this afternoon, right? Okay. That, that's, that's evident. And Marshall wanted it more. Notre Dame didn't. Right. Man, there were some of those plays, I think, in the second touchdown that Marshall scored, Notre Dame's whole defensive line was in the end zone, like on their back, like, like ah! they're doing like the, the, uh, the, the upside-down turtle thing. Because, I mean, their offensive line was dominating them. Dang. Are you kidding me? So, I mean. A lot of people are going to have to wake up. Well, and again, that's that's Marcus's job, right? And, yeah. and, and he took that responsibility and said that, you know, hey, this is my fault. I'm the head coach here. But I would like to kind of say that there were some instances where we didn't perform as we should have. And, you know, I think the the challenge is going to be getting these kids ready and the fact that no coach in the history of Notre Dame has gone 0-3 their first year, which is kind of interesting, but they have a chance to go and be great. It's just going to – they're going to have to have a kick-ass practice tonight, tomorrow, mm-hmm. the next day, and go and just not worry about any of this other bullshit that's going on that people are talking about. Them. Not being in the rankings for, you know, 80 years, all, all this stuff – is 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 just hearsay crap that, that shouldn't even be talked about. I mean, if I was Marcus, I'd try to hook up something. I, I would talk to my media staff to like shut down all the cell phones as soon as you walk into the building or something, because you don't want these kids to hear any of the outside stuff that's going on. Because if you do start listening to it, then you, then you're going to feel like you're a loser. And the other thing is, Cal coming in, they Marshall. We could beat these guys. Now you're going to get a motivated Cal. They become absolutely. It's like the New York Yankees. They become everybody's exact Super same Bowl. Thing. Exact. It's the exact same thing. That's absolutely. It. You you think? I mean, Marshall, dude, they were pumped. The coach was pumped, as they should be. Yeah. They came in their house. We we paid them a shit ton of money to play them. Yeah. We got them to come over in in South Bend, Indiana, so we could beat them, and they spanked that ass. I don't know Rudy yeah, we or We Are Marshall. Which movie is better? <laughs> but <laughs> all of a sudden we had we had the Marshall Notre Dame face off, and as Chris is telling you, I told you from jump last season. We're in season two. Chris doesn't play bias. It says it in the song. Ain't no bias. Chris Sorge preaching truth. Like, real. I mean, you know, it's, be it's, real. it's the same thing with, with, with us. I mean, when, when we won the national championship, there were a couple of games, you know, that were close. Hey, it, it happens. Move on. Yes. But you learn it, from it. Exactly. And, 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 and I think that uh, Coach Freeman has the type of attitude and the staff that these guys will learn from it. And they'll have a chance to kind of see what happens when, you know, you aren't the favorite son, right? right? Because now, I mean, everybody was loving on Marcus. Everybody was loving Notre Dame. You know, people that hated Notre Dame, people that didn't even know anything about Notre Dame was loving Marcus coming to the locker room. And all of a sudden, guess what? You got a whole nation that hates your ass. How now we're going to respond. Exactly. And, and, and that's what I think is, is great. And, and I mentioned this toward the end of my interview that I was on NBC national during the game with like, like 11 million people watching with your kilt with my kilt on. Exactly. Um, So I did kilt it in my kilt. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I talk about leadership 
And, and, and these are this is the time when 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 true leaders rise, right? Because everybody could be a leader when they're winning, high fiving and slapping people on the butt. Hey, man, we we got this, we got this. Well, y'all, yeah, y'all just one fifty six nothing. Yeah, y'all got it, y'all got it. Yeah. But <laughs> when the the chips are down, right? The adversity comes. When adversity kind of slaps you right in the face, what do you do? How do you respond? And that's I'm kind of looking at, man. I'm getting chills, man. That's that's what I'm excited about because yeah. I want to see how Notre Dame is going to respond. I want to see how Marcus Freeman is going to respond. I want to see how some of these defensive and offensive linemen are going to respond to basically the nation saying that y'all suck. It's gonna be Let's go. amazing Let's go. as we move forward. Now, number fourteen, Marshall. No, wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. wow. I kid, I kid, but you're a hundred percent right. That's going to be amazing to watch as we go through this college football season. How not only Notre Dame, how does Texas A&M respond? How do these how does Alabama respond? respond? How does Alabama respond? Have you found a, an ingredient from Sarkeesian to see how to play Alabama? Exactly. All of this stuff, college football, man. Football is the greatest game. You can debate back and forth, but there's something so special about the traditions of college football. And traditionally here from 15, Russian oh, Ronnie on, got it right this one, week. One, Go one, ahead. One more one more thing. Yeah. You ask Notre Dame, you ask Texas A&M, and you ask Nebraska about teams – beating anybody on every given Sunday. And you'd be like, are you kidding me? We're playing teams from the Sun Belt. We're playing Georgia Southern. We're playing uh, Marshall. We're playing App State. Are you kidding me? We're power five teams. We have great tradition. We can roll on people. Not a chance. There's always a chance. Always. Always. Always a chance. Always a chance. Rudy, always a chance, baby. 14. Number 14. Baylor. This is another freaking good game, man. This was what this was two overtimes. Um, and Baylor actually dropped five spots. Uh, I, I still got re- respect for Baylor. Um I I think was that on my end or was that yeah. that was you? That was me. What the hell was that? Wasn't you. On your end, it was oh. you. Somebody just sent me something. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, know. Thanks. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm doing a show. I'm doing a <laughs> Super 16 Polish over here. Yeah. Sure, you want to jump in? Because apparently he'll have some other stuff to do. He's, he's, Listen, he's I was just people. getting something for the show. He, he, sure, sure. I sure. thought it was muted. I did not know it had audio. Makes me even feel better that that, that you're doing other things during our show. But hey. That, I'm producing. Fine. Producing. That is, Quality. That is fine. As Quality I was talking control. about, Baylor, yes. he's still a very good team. Um, huge fan of the head coach. But, I mean, I didn't have BYU ranked. It, it was a good game. Again, double overtime. I mean, this was like literally the from the first game, which was Alabama-Texas, to one of the – to what was the last game on Saturday? I, I forgot. I mean, I, was, I think I was falling asleep. It was crazy. Um, was it BYU? No, BYU was. was late. Okay, yeah, yeah. USC was late. Right, right. But I mean, it, it was just an exciting, exciting day. So oh my we can God. move on to thirteen because we got somebody else new in the poll. Number thirteen, Kentucky. How bad do you feel if you're Florida's head coach? Oh my! God. So, I mean, you come from out of nowhere. And Spain BYU, and you're just like, hey, you know, this is great. We're, 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 we're going to play another SEC team. This, this is going to be a regular Wednesday for us because who the hell is Kentucky? Say what? <laughs> I mean, it was a good team. Yeah. Kentucky is a good team. A lot of people had Florida ranked. It Have went from unranked. To like super ranked. To super ranks, like but not 12. in the super 16 poll show, baby. No, baby. And it why went. is that? Because we tell the truth. Why? Because the truth never help me out. The truth 
The tape never lies. I was going to say the truth, the truth will set you free. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's what you did. Oh, thank you, Siri. Thank you. Wow. Really? Okay. All right. All right. It actually looks like you that's do it. Watch. Right. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> it is All right. Top, okay. top 10 drop. Wow. Gotta wow, be thank you very much. Drop. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. That was, <laughs> that was about as good as the, the Notre Dame D line. That was as good as about no, number 47. Number 47. Yes, that was, that was very Dame. good. I that think Edwin good. has him coming back. Yes, he did. At least Edwin has faith. Thank but you, Kentucky, Edwin. man. What, where are you going? Where were you going? I was just saying. The man. truth should set Kentucky. you free. Where were you thinking? Well, Seriously. I, I actually forgot. I was going to say the. <laughs> So you're pinning it the on me. The never lies, but I meant to say the tape never lies. So thank you. You caught me there. I keep it. Me. I like that you kept it a hundred. That's why I, I tried to. I tried to. But again, yeah. I mean, you know, the whole idea of Florida kind of bouncing back and kind of jumping in the fray, and then all of a sudden, thank you, thank you, Edwin. I appreciate that. Okay, Please. watch out. Watch out, Louisiana Monroe. Oh, he's bad. Yes. Where are you at with Kentucky? I'm done with Kentucky. No, but where do you think? What are your th like? Do you think they're going to? I'm excited. To yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, There's something about that Stone quarterback. State. They got Youngstown got, State. Um, he's got some swag. That QB. He did. He only had like about 200 yards, but still, I mean, the idea that they were able to kind of overcome this 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 great Florida team. Everybody thought about it was. I think it was good. So. I think the Florida quarterback they did they forced him to be something he's not, mm -hmm. and that's really what hurt Florida. He had to make some of those throws down the stretch, and he didn't. Yeah, that really. Well, didn't they have another quarterback that left? Because I think he was he was at somewhere else, and he he, he actually I played really well. I forgot Chris. Where it was. To keep track of all these quarterbacks. Yeah, no kidding, dude. It is crazy. It was hilarious. So on the first uh, game day, they had like this little kind of segment where they talked about they had a, a listing of all the quarterback spaces that went in the transfer portal. Yeah. Was, there were like 60 of them. It was like, <laughs> and they were saying, they were, so they, somebody would pop up and he said, okay, where did he go? And we're like, dude, no clue. I mean, it's there like were free. so many moves. It's like plan B free agency turning to free agency. Oh, my God. Well, Remember and then that? I want to talk about when we talk about um, uh, what the hell team was that? When we, when we talk about um, uh, damn um, man, <laughs> the receiver I don't know. I can't Pitt, help you out. The receiver for Pitt that won the, the Oh, he call. went to USC. That's it, dude. When we talk about USC, oh my God, that kid. Where, where? Well, first of all, we're, well, hold on. So, so let's let's get off of Kentucky. Let's go to number twelve. Let's go number twelve. Number twelve, Ole Miss. All right, this is our boy Lane Kiffin. Lane, he's just kind of being calm. He's, he's he really hadn't made any crazy comments. He's just kind of laying back in the cut. They have Georgia Tech next week. He's still going to lay down the cut a little bit until he starts playing his uh, arts nemesis. Then we'll, 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 we'll kind of see some action. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about um, Ole Miss. Really, really didn't play anybody. I mean, they played Central Arkansas, which, you know, obviously they were supposed to win. So, right. nothing special about them. Let's move on. Number, on. Number 11, Arkansas. Now, I still love this team because the 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 coach is a former offensive line coach, which you don't see very often. Yes. Love that. And, I mean, again, they, they want to play another SEC team, South Carolina, which is good, but they kind of knew they were going to win. So it really wasn't anything that great. But I'm loving the, the offensive line coach. And I think what did we have them last year, I think their highest rank was like, I think it was it had to be like in the top ten last year. Yeah, we you had them moving up because they really had Alabama on the ropes, yep. and then they down the stretch trailing Burks and the quarterback there number five. What's this kid? He's growing into a better passer this year. 
Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah. And he's multi. I mean, that's a big boy. Yeah. Then they got the big tight end that he runs like a receiver. <laughs> so it's like Arkansas has some some things at their disposal. So when you have an offensive line coach who's or an offensive lineman who's your head coach, you know running the ball is going to be prideful. Absolutely. So this team, just like App State and those other ones, any any given Saturday, Arkansas could come to town. They're my dark horse, man. I love what I'm seeing yeah, in it. Arkansas. Love it. I'm loving what I'm seeing in Arkansas. So I'm right with you here. Nice. Want to go to 10? Number 10, Miami. Now, this team, I mean, I am very excited about this. The U. And, and, and I'm excited not only because we beat them for the national championship and they kicked our ass the next year when the national championship. But I'm a huge Mario Cristobal fan. And the fact that they, on purpose, brought him back was just huge. They actually brought him back before they brought a new AD in. So right. that, that just tells you kind of like who kind of runs the show there. But the idea that you know he's getting former guys back, I mean, this is something that's going to be huge. You, you made the, the the comment last week. You wonder if Luke is going to be back. He probably won't be back. But we have a lot of other players who, who Luke was back. in the stands. He'll be in the stands maybe. Well, the you. Before Luke was on the sideline and in practice. So I'm pretty sure that that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's not going to happen yeah. anymore. Yeah, but, I'm excited about them too. And, and, and think about this. They have Texas A&M next, which I think is going to be a great game because you're going to have Texas A&M who's going to be pissed. They're pissed. And you have Miami who wants to prove because they just beat uh, Southern Miss, which, you know. So they have a chance to go out there and kind of prove that they belong on the national stage again. So it's going to be an exciting game. Huge game here because of what you said. It was going to be big no matter what, but now you have an opponent that's on the ropes in Texas A&M, and you have an up-and-coming opponent. How does Coach – how do you say his last name again? Cristobal. Cristobal. His how does he look in his crystal ball and wow. attack? I'm sure that's never been said before. No, maybe it, uh, I no. thought I had the copyrights to that's it. Okay. That's okay. Well, how's You're he going to attack guy. this football team and use this motivation? Because you can't overlook the fact, like you said, they're going to be pissed and motivated. So you got to get your players ready on top of knowing that they are prime for the plucking. I don't care how ready they're pissed they are you got to believe in who you are and what you do and that's i don't want to ruin anything but that's the game that i'm i'm excited about watching this and it's going to be at nm exactly back in the house the 12th man is that at night i hope i don't have the exact time on that sheree can you check miami a versus Texas A and M. What time? Let's I'm go to number. Sure, I'm pretty sure they moved it to the evening. I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go to number, number nine. Nine. Number nine. Michigan State University. Hey hey. So hey, hey. apparently there's a, a blueprint, which is what the coach from Marshall did. He brought in 25 guys from the transfer portal that were yes. at Power 5 schools. I don't think they were all from Power 5 schools, but the majority of them were. And they went out and they, they played. And he even commented on that after the game and said that this stage for the majority of those guys was nothing because they, they were at Power 5 schools before. Exactly. So the genius blueprint, the head coach in Michigan State, our buddy Mel Mel Tucker, Tucker. He, he had the blueprint. I mean, mm-hmm. he, how many guys? He had like 40 guys or something like that? Yeah. He had a Oh, 9 p.m. Oh, wow. 9 p.m., Chris. Hot. Me and you will be watching. That's, that's going to be hot, man. We should go on and do a show watching it together sometime. That's that's going to be hot. Game I'll be in my kill. <laughs> You'll be in your kill. Yes. That's going to be exciting. But Mel Tucker, Chris, he had a reputation around here that he was a 
a bad coach or whatever. He's been doing his thing yeah. there. Obviously, ninety five million dollars. Uh, I don't think he's a bad coach. <laughs> he was I'm the first one. Him. He was the first I'm... one to get it, man. Mel Tucker. He was the first Michigan. one outside of that. Nick Saban, Les Miles, all the, the he is a Nick Saban. Guys. Nick Saban loves Mel Tucker. Yes, he should. Just, as I, I, I can attest to that because my, again, I'm throwing my uncle. My uncle's very close to coach close to coach Saban and Mel Tucker as well. And Mel was a pro protege of my uncle. Nice. So I always stuck up for Mel for the truth because he got put in a bad situation with Mark Tressman saying, listen, you got to run what they're used to here. And Mel being who he is, was trying to accommodate the bears veterans, but that's a whole nother story. But I know he got a bad rap in this town and, Remember, he was in Jacksonville for a hot minute, taking over for a heady Jack Del Rio. And we saw what he did there. He was turning that team around. But but Rich Gordon, that's the thing. He got put in a bad situation where players didn't want to play for Mel or Mark. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he forgot all about that because when you're – Ninety-five your ninety-five million dollar check. You're, you're, I really don't thinking about like what happened a couple of years ago. I'm just saying. I'm just like, saying. like eight years ago now. He's okay. long so gone from that. Ago, you're like right. Right now, all he's thinking about doing is beating Akron, which he did fifty-two nothing. Right. He so beat Akron. Point, just Who do they got? Running. Who do they got this week? And Washington. Uh, Washington. So that's going to be a good game. Yes. Yes. See, so there are, there are some 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 challenging games out there, but. Um, that's, uh, I mean, I'm excited to kind of see how he does year two after bringing in all those guys. Let's go to number seven. Number seven, USC. How about number eight? But that's okay. So I'll just do number eight. Number, number eight. eight, Oklahoma State. <laughs> oh, no. What? Did, did I skip it? Yes, but the number. You're busy. You're busy texting. No, there's no. You're busy texting. What happened? You're, I think I deleted. You just forgot it. to do it. That's all. See, because you're doing something else. See? No, there's no eight yeah. there. Look. Okay. okay. Three. All right. There's no eight. Sure. Can you attest? There's no eight. Okay. All right. So I'll <laughs> do it. So there he is. Uh, Oklahoma State number eight. Oklahoma State <laughs> number eight. Ronnie's gonna be upset again. <laughs> It's a Russian Rod, right? You can't, you can't stop blaming him, man. Um, it, well, actually, he was supposed to be on the show. I mean, we were supposed to give him shit for it. Yeah, we were supposed to bring him up. up a couple things. Yep. Maybe he's exactly. in the chat. Maybe he's in there. Maybe. Get him. So, Oklahoma State. Yeah. So, this is a team that actually a lot of people weren't too excited about last year. They were okay. Why don't have the chance to go to the bowl game, beat Notre Dame in the bowl game? Why don't stay ranked in a couple of uh, polls? And I liked them. I had them ranked higher than their name because guess what? They beat their name the year before. I didn't think their name deserved to be ranked five, which they were in some national polls. So yes. they were lower and they keep winning. Um, wound up playing a, in, in an average Arizona State team. But, you know, now it's kind of they're, they're going to play one of their push games, one of their pay games, and then they're, they're, they're going through their season. But I'm hoping that Arkansas Pine Bluff is not in the Sun Belt. Because <laughs> <laughs> every team that's playing a team in the Sun Belt now is like on watch. They're like, oh, hell to the no. No, no, no. This is not happening. Not happening. So that was my number eight. So you want to go ahead and go to number seven? Number seven. Number seven, USC. I tell you, man, I am stoked. I'm excited about USC. This is. The first time I've been excited about USC in a long time. Although, you know, I mean. They were a rival back in the day, right? I, 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 I've never lost them, so I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I, I, one of the things that people say, you know, oh, Chris and I, oh, talk about Michigan. And pretty, I'm like, when I when I played, I never lost to the Big Ten, so I'm good. So I, I get no problem <laughs> with that. And I never lost to USC, so I'm really good about that. But that being said, the idea that they were able to bring the coach 
Yeah. Peter Riley and Caleb Williams. And the and I forgot about this until dude caught a pass in the game, but the receiver from Pitt, because his boy left, the quarterback left. Yeah. Pick it. He wound up rolling and it goes to SC. And so now you have there's a receiver that was at, at Oklahoma. He followed Caleb and his coach. They got a whole track so they, squad over so there. So now all of a sudden, yeah, I was thinking about USC. I was like, eh, you know, I, I don't know about USC now. Dude, they're, they're a contender now. Dude, when I was a kid, just hearing that, I could just close my eyes, hear Brent Musburger or Keith Jackson, one of those two. Talking about Notre Dame, USC, mm-hmm. Nebraska, Alabama, and hearing, but USC's I used to it. just go crazy with that. Love and it. now it's back to and Rich Gordon in the chat sa- is saying exactly what I'm saying. When college football is so much better when USC is relevant it really is it's like the nfl with the bears Mm -hmm. gotta have that piece of the puzzle to make this stuff even greater usc and it's those historical teams that that have those historical wins in the pageantry and you know Mm -hmm. when was the last time you were really excited about a team from california right i mean exactly (laughs) it wasn't since reggie bush (laughs) <laughs> there you go, line, man. Probably one of the greatest college games ever. Liner, Vince Young battling with Reggie. But remember that awesome. game? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Of so, so I'm excited. So now they kind of have a chance to rest a little bit. They wound up um, beating Stanford, but then now they have a chance to play Fresno State. You know, are they the real deal? We'll see. That's not going to be a challenge for them, but they'll stay in the, in the in the top rankings. And mm-hmm. I think this is, this is going to be good for college football because you're going to see uh, a, a really good coach. I, I think Nick and Ryan is a good coach. Um, I think he's going to enjoy, his family is going to enjoy the access to the jet. We, we talked about last week, which is going to be great. So he, he, he doesn't have to worry about that, but also grabbing a Heisman candidate um, from Oklahoma to kind of follow him there. I, I think it's going to be – and plus he's in kind of in that environment in L.A. So, man, there's going to be a lot of hype around this team. It's going to be awesome seeing how this plays itself out. But the return so far has been impressive. We'll see how it goes. And, and by the way, I mean, you have a receiver that won the top receiver award in the country, and he went to another school. And chose a good USC. There's a lot of the schools he, he could have gone to that had great quarterbacks. Do you think Notre Dame could get some a quarterback in the transfer portal? Uh like tomorrow? Because Tyler Buckner, you you saw Tyler Buckner's shoulder. Yes, yes which is we didn't even talk about that. So it's it's, it's gonna be a challenge, man. It's gonna be a big challenge. It's be a challenge. What is the rule though, real quick? Real What's quick. The- What's the rule of the portal? Can uh, someone transfer? I don't mid-season? think you need to transfer during the season. I, I, think, oh, okay. I don't think you need to transfer during the season. That's the I whole didn't thing. Know. Yeah. Because look, look at it. I mean, you, you have somebody who, you know, played their first couple of games and then they decided, eh, You're like, you no, know, I'm going to bounce. Coach let's see, bench wait, me. Let's see. Either that or we just suffered two losses. Let me go to a team that got some wins. So, well, all right. Let's, let's go to six. Let's see if we have number six or is it five? It's six, six, the okay. Kevin Butler. Number six, Oklahoma. Kent State, I mean, this is – I was hoping for a good game. Their next game was going to be in Nebraska. I was hoping for a great matchup with Oklahoma and Nebraska. But you mentioned before Scott Frost got fired uh, after losing to a team in the Sun Belt, which was Georgia Southern. Um, somebody's talked about having, I want to say, I forgot how many yards that, um, Georgia Southern had, but it was like a thousand or something like that. It was, <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. Sheree could look it up. It was what ridiculous, but, 
But I mean, Georgia they... Southern versus Nebraska, the offensive output. What was the number? I mean, I just don't like talking about kind of like them playing Kent State, right? Because it's right. like, I mean, you know, what are we going to talk about? But the idea that um, Brent Variables is able to kind of get this team together, it's his team now. Yep. And he wound up getting a kid. I think he was in the transfer portal, maybe. Uh, it was a kid from Hawaii. I don't know if he's he played in Hawaii, but he's from Hawaii. And he wound up throwing up some good numbers. So, yeah, they're a team. A lot of people are on, were on the, you know, the line with. They don't know what to expect. Right. Obviously, with Lincoln going to USC, taking the quarterback with them, other players bouncing. Oklahoma so far, again to your point, Kent State. But in this day and age, we can't even say that. Yeah, I know exactly of what's exactly. going on right. with the transfer portal as well as the Sun Belt and smaller school conferences uh, stepping up to the plate, except for UConn. But anyway, <laughs> here we go. Number five. Number five. Clemson. So we have got to talk about this. So everybody's down on DJU. I mean, ooh, ooh, I'm going to jack the name up again. <laughs> we never get his name right. Uh, Google, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is called DJU, as everybody else is calling it. And I'm not trying to do that out of disrespect. No. I just can't pronounce it correctly. Um, everybody's talking about that. He should sit. Well, what do you think? I have never seen him make me feel like he's the guy mm -hmm. that he's been hyped to be. We talked about it last week getting Ron Paulus on because he came in with a lot of hype right. and a lot of pressure. This kid, same thing. And DJ, however we say, I'm with you, Chris. Can't say his last name because I can't see him holding me like comfortable. I remember Iowa having these quarterbacks. It just you're never – you're a good football team, but you're held back by your quarterback's inability sure. to make a play. Michigan, same thing for a year. Your quarterback's holding you back. You got to have somebody that's going to deliver in critical times. And we always shake our heads that how could they not get these guys? This, this kid has came in with all the hype. But he's not delivered the promise. Now he's worked on his body, he's lost weight because he totally was way too heavy last year. This well, year, all I remember is that he beat the crap out of, uh, well, he, he almost beat the crap out of Notre Dame when he was a freshman. When, right. And um, Trevor Lawrence was out for one, for, for two games last year, or no, yeah. a couple of years ago. It was either one or two games. It just happens to be Notre Dame and they're, they're ranked number one. At the time, they want to beat. So he them. hit that one big play, dude. He had like four hundred, like four hundred ninety-five yards. Yeah, man. but a bunch of bubble screens. They were just okay. Beat. Well, they all add up to about five hundred yards. He but had. I never felt like this guy has shown me he can read the coverages and deliver I'm sure. footballs I'm sure. down the field. That's that's my scouting eye on him. I would not. And I know Rich is saying it's a lot of pressure, but hey, welcome. You write your own story. I don't give a crap what college you go to. Caught myself, Chris. Hey. You got to go out there and write your story. So every quarterback that goes to Michigan's got to be Tom Brady? No. Right. You got to be who you are. And I haven't seen it from him. And I would, based on the talent of that team, I would be talking about a quarterback competition, no doubt in my mind, because the kid they brought in, you could just see athletically. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, let's go to number four. Do you have any other thoughts? I do not. The, they will play Louisiana Tech next week. Uh, not going to be a huge test, but maybe the other guy will have a chance to get in there and throw some yards. Let's go to number four number for four. Sharif. Number Four, Michigan. Oh, snap. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. 
They put up 56 it. points. Yes. 56. And so now there was a, a quarterback controversy there, right? But apparently uh, – beginning to look a lot. Carson probably got the job then, huh? It's looking like there's going to be a change. I just – the eyeball test, Chris, you just feel the team feels a little bit more comfortable with well, the other guys. He was talking guys. about the biblical and shit, so, <laughs> which that kind of threw me off a little bit. That was last week's. That was last Super week's. 16th yes. poll floor. We just, we forgot to show that. Oh, sorry. That's okay. No, it's okay. I was, this you're week. Busy, you're just a busy Texan, you know. This, <laughs> this week, Michigan number four. Yes. Number four. What are your thoughts, though, with Michigan? I mean, I'm excited. They actually finally got uh, an actual quarterback that, that that they're happy with. Yeah. I, I want to see them do well, man. I mean, I, I thought it was a, they had a great year last year. Um, it's a I great think Ohio year. Ohio State is going to just, I mean. You think Ohio State's going to beat them? Pardon me? You're, uh, feel, you're feeling hmm. Ohio State? Hmm. Or is this too early for prediction? Well, it might be too early, but still, I haven't talked about Ohio State yet. So, oh, a so teaser it, coming up. It may be the they may be number three. How about that? You want to go to number three? Sure. You said? sure. Number three, Alabama. Damn, oh, got sorry, you. man. Sorry. <laughs> now, as y'all know, I love me some Alabama. I'm a huge, huge Alabama fan. But you cannot tell me they deserve to be number one. I wouldn't tell you that. I mean, after that performance, unranked Texas team. Okay, yes, it's in Texas. But still, I mean, they had a chance to lose that game, and they want – now, I think the only reason why they won that game was because their damn quarterback back, Bryce Young, is just – he has to be as – I mean, he is like Jalen Hurts was, just like calm, oh, man. It could be I said the chaos. Same thing. It could be one second left Dude. in the national championship game, and you guys are down by three points, and – I, it just and he's just looking at them like, all right, I got this. And a lot of people have said that people, well, well, a lot of people criticize him about that. They're like, you know, where's the motion? Where's the motion? I mean, you, you don't want your quarterback to be out there crazy, uh, you know, headbutting people. You want that guy to be calm, cool, and collective because when the when the game's online, and he even said it, um, Bryce said it after the game. He said, "We love games. I mean, granted, they don't like being behind, but right. he loves games like this because." I mean, it just shows how good they are. And the idea that he was out there running the show and just – and then there was a one play where – actually, it was funny because I was talking to um, uh, some folks in the green room. We were watching it, and it was a play where he, he almost got sacked. Um, Bryce Young almost got sacked. And, like, he went down, and his knee almost touched the ground, but it didn't. And he wound up either getting the first down or – That was the play of the down. game. It was a freaking play of the game, man. Right That's there. That's the fourth down. That was fourth down. The game's Come on. on the line. Come on. Dude, that's – I know I brought him up last week. I got to bring him up again because that's my comp. It's Jake Plummer. I've witnessed guys – If I don't know what happened with Jake with his love of the game. And there was almost uh, – Shane talks about it as well as I, I guess – it was in a book that the Bears were going to draft Jake Plummer, or trade for him, sign him, and stuff didn't work out. He ended up going to Denver. But the reality is when I look at Scott, there's a certain cerebral calmness. Joe Montana, Jake Plummer, more recently for me watching it, this kid Bryce Young is unflappable. It's like the moment he's – everything slowed down and – that play right there. If he gets sacked, game over. Oh, game That's over. It. That's game it. over. You just, I mean, that kid who comes in, he's coming in clean off that. Oh, my that God. Yes. And you kid, that kid must have like 16 minutes of sleep, probably. Seriously. 
just so, keeps dreaming yeah. about he, that he, play over and over. So, I don't want to say his name. There's a a, a famous hit that, and, and I've talked about this too, Cornelius Bennett, and actually also uh, Steve Berline as well. But there's this great hit that uh, Cornelius Bennett, the amazing defensive end for Alabama, and also obviously the, the Bills, the NFL, and everything. But he had this amazing hit on um, Steve Berline. I think it was eighty. Six or eighty-seven, it was just an, it's it's in a crazy hit. Like like literally, you can look it up if you Google Cornelius Bennett and sack Steve Berline. Steve Berline. I think it's even called the sack. I think, but I mean it's just freaking amazing. Anyway, that guy and he's gonna have nightmares because that wound up being called the sack, and it's like literally like this this mainstay. It's this unbelievable image of college football. He could have had that same image, but. You know, I mean, all all Bryce did was like, boop. He, he dipped down a little bit, and just it was like, In- whoof. instinctive. It's crazy, amazing. absolutely it's amazing. crazy. So, but they still almost lost. So that's the reason why they are number three. They dropped one spot to number three. So, who's number two? Number two, Ohio State. Oh, damn. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. So now, am I, is this my bias that I don't like Ohio State because I think they should be number one? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. They haven't – they almost lost to Notre Dame, who was ranked five at the time. Didn't – I didn't think was supposed to be there. I'm sorry, it was ranked seven in my poll, but five in other polls. I don't think should have been there. So – and then they also beat Arkansas State. Like, eh. Versus another team who wound up dominating. But I think that it was great that we finally had a chance to kind of see the, the receivers blossom. Um, the, the one receiver, unfortunately, is still out. Um, I forgot who he was. Uh, I forgot his name. But um, we had a chance to watch uh, CJ Stroud do well again. Um, he had three, he had over 350 yards. Um, Definitely going to be in the highs to watch. We forgot to talk about Bryce Young and his Heisman, but I mean, the idea that you have some great quarterbacks this year, it's going to be really hard for someone not a quarterback to win that, that the Heisman. It's going to be interesting. Ohio State, I would have Michigan too in my power poll. That's okay. You know, but I just, well, they you have Ohio State. I want to, they were. You know, Ranked higher than Ohio State in the first poll. I know. Because, you, you why? Leapfrog. Because they spanked that ass. Well, no. Michigan <laughs> spanked Ohio State's ass last year. So they yes. started off above. But now Ohio, State. Ohio State's above at number two. Who's Michigan play? They they, they played Hawaii. <laughs> Who was their first game against? Colorado State? Colorado State. That's okay. Right. Come on, bro. At least any Saturday. At Chris. least. Oh, bro. Okay. All right. Now. Okay. Great. But at least Ohio <laughs> State can say that they 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 beat a ranked Notre Dame team. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's how it's gonna be. Huh? Okay. All right. All right. That is You're my right. reason why You're Ohio right. State is ranked above Michigan. There so, you go. Yeah. People you are gonna want to know. You got Colorado State and Hawaii. Okay, you you explained it. I'm the just... only reason why now had Michigan beat Clemson or something like that, absolutely. Let's do this. Yeah, but they beat Colorado State. I I hear you. I wanted an explanation. Why? But that's why I'd be more than a... happy to argue. You the, got sorry, it. To discuss you make a great point. point. They beat. Who did they play this past weekend, Ohio State? They played uh, Arkansas State. Arkansas State. Hawaii, Colorado State, Arkansas State, Notre Dame. Day. Notre right. Dame lost to Austin P. I mean, Marshall. <laughs> <That's eight. laughs> to so, so there you go. You got Ostra. <laughs> just bringing their football program right. back. So, this hey. I. I'm sure your boy Rick is a big fan of me. 
Yes. So I had to keep it a hundred with you. I personally would put Michigan two. Okay. I I see where you're coming from. You've explained it, and let me tell you, yes. there's not a guy I trust more than Chris Zorich when it comes to no biased. He probably would rank Notre Dame State over Notre Dame right there. <laughs> Hey, man, you got to be honest, man. Let's go to number one, Chris. Number one. Number one Georgia. Can somebody please put Stetson Bennett on the damn Heisman watch, please? Oh, my God. Because, dude, come on, man. Another 300-yard oh, wow. game. I mean, this dude, it would be forget Rudy, forget the marks. I mean, these, this is a great – I mean, not forget Marshall. I didn't mean to say that, but this is a great football story. This yeah. is a, and I think I showed you last time. I took a picture of it. It was like first year scout squad. Next year went to junior college. He came back. The coach was like, "Yeah, yeah, should have stayed there." He sat the bench behind Fromm. Sat the bench uh, behind uh, what's his face. Um, the guy who who uh, he Justin just Fields. No, no, uh-uh. he transferred to. Uh, he transferred because JT Daniels. Yes, yes, yes. Behind him, he he gets the the injury. He comes in, takes it to the promised land, and now he has a full off season with them. Man, I he, he would be my number, and only because. I mean, I would rank him above like Bryce Young. Which is hard to do. Um, Caleb Williams, uh, CJ Stroud, just because of like who they compete against, what he had to overcome. Yeah. Right. I mean, none of those guys had to transfer to a junior college. None of those guys were on the scout squad. I mean, this is an amazing, amazing story. And I just hope that they keep on winning. He keeps on throwing up those numbers. So they're going to have to force him to put him into the, uh, the Heisman watch. Even though it helps that they have a defense, um, like Richard saying, I have to agree with Chris. There's something to be said about a determination of somebody that is unwilling to back down from competition. We've seen it with Tom Brady, sixth round pick, can't do it, can't throw the ball. And it's not hindsight. It's just the reality. Like he decided that he's going to be great and I'm going to work that hard. This kid is of that same cloth. And you could just see it. There's something to be said about it. I'm totally with you. I've had debates with people, former people that worked with me. Like you're never going to tell me. It's like Kenny Pickett's not a first-round quarterback. Yeah, he is in my book. Because of these, inter- this kid is an NFL quarterback in my book for everything Chris is talking about, as well as the anticipation throws. Because I don't care if a guy could throw 70 yards, is he anticipating accuracy? Stetson does it time and time again. And there's something to be said about that on top of having those, I hate to use the sneaky athletic. But he's beyond that. He's athletic as a quarterback. He can run. He can move. He can continue and do plays that are off script. Mm -hmm. And we can't punish a guy for where he plays or who he plays with. Does he deliver? Because the goal, look at the conversation. Four picks, four of Chris's picks ago, the kid from Clemson. Can he deliver to all that talent? They got a great defense. right. Right? So – Football is the ultimate team sport. Quarterback is the most important position. You got one here. I'm totally with you, Chris, and it's the right call. Number one team in the land right well, there. And then I also think that even with, you know, folks are watching, um, you know, even if you didn't play sports, I mean, there's, there's been a moment in your life where you've been defeated and you, you, you've accepted that. And you're like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to do something else. Well, here's a kid who was defeated, who said, no, you know what? I don't care. 
And It'll be 25 next week, Chris. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, That's like this, you, you can't. And, and, and I love hearing stories about this because you know, let's say he blows out his knee or he, he gets his leg amputated. This guy is going to be so successful in life because he was successful in this short period of time in the years that we had a chance to see him. I mean, he's going to be a CEO of some company someday, or he's going to do something amazing because all of these traits that he, he learned, which, which, all the which are pretty sure he had before. Exactly. And he's looking at it saying, okay, cool. You know what? It's adversity. And this is what I talked about before with Notre Dame about leadership. I mean, how do these guys on the team not follow that guy? I mean, exactly. you want to talk about the, the idea of leadership and how do these coaches feel some of the same coaches told his ass to, 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 to go back to the junior college. And the now he won a national championship for him. The ultimate story there. It's for Disney should be love writing it. it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, anyway, keep... so Heisman, um, they're, they played Samford. They have another game against uh, South Carolina. You know, let's, I, I'm just going to watch him. I'm just going to have a little asterisk by his name. And kind of talk about it, talk about him every week. Because not that I have a Heisman vote, but I would have voted for get him. You one. We gotta get oh, you one. You go. yes. hey, hey, man. We started <laughs> Let's off do with this. Super 16. Super do 16. This now he's on national TV in a kilt. Hello. Tomorrow he'll be doing McDonald's commercials. Oh, I'll have an NBC vote. I actually did doing? a McDonald's commercial before. Did you? Yeah, a long time ago. What was many, it about? Many moons ago. You can't say that without. It was a Halloween <laughs> McDonald's commercial. And what happened? It was were you dressed uh, up as the Hulk. What were you doing? I was not. It was um, if I can re recollect, I think it was me and Alonzo Spellman were, were in the commercial. Oh my god! Yeah, I can't find it though. I've tried to find it, but Maybe. I think it's on like one of the VHS we VHS tapes in the. Someone business. probably has it in Chicago. Let's hope they do. And if and you send do, it, send it to TTNL. Yes, please. We can watch That's Chris's great. Halloween 10 piece McNugget deal. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of 10 piece, let's go to five pieces. Help. Great, great segue. I like that. So I would just like to take, I would like to rip up my top five from last because I was like, eh, you know what? I don't think it was going to be any good games. So you just throw, throw that out of the window. However, my number one game, of course, is going to be what? Number one? Yes. Got to be uh, USC. Huh. No? Uh oh. Troy App State. Troy. <laughs> Yes, Troy. number one, Troy App State. Number man. one. Yes, Troy. I want to, dude. Hey, man, I'm, I'm hey. jump on the App State bandwagon, man. Big because you App know State it's going to be nuts, you know. And, and they, they probably got a stadium that sits like thirty thousand or like forty five yep. or something like that, and it's going to be rocking. They're going to have like eighty thousand people there for game day. So I, I think that's it's going to be a great one. The App State. What is their um I think nickname? They're the, they're the they're the I had it this afternoon. <laughs> the App State Appalachians. I, I have no idea. No. Sure. I guarantee you once again, I was telling my guys Wait. there at the game. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was, I was telling my guys at the game 16. that the, the, the App State website is probably gonna crash because no one knows like who the hell they are. Everybody went to go to go see who they were. So they're like Oh my god! Oh my god! And then they're they're they're, they're watching. Oh, is, is App State ranked um, nationally? Whoa, the Mountaineers. No, whoa, hold on. Yes, yeah, they're ranked 16. Did you not pay attention to they're you? Yes, show. on right. our show, on right the, with national college football analyst Chris Zorich yes. of yes, NBC exactly. Sports Kilt yes. Yes. segments. The kilt. Thank you. Yes, sir. Exactly. <laughs> the kilt segment. Yeah, 16. If they're not what smart enough, have? it's them. My second game is uh, Miami, Texas a &M. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Miami, Texas A&M. Yes. Nine o'clock. Hello. Big Nine game. Nine o'clock East. 
Then they got Oklahoma and Nebraska because I want to see how Nebraska bounces back from all this craziness, right? Have they announced the interim coach yet? Uh, I think it's like one of the assistants. I think maybe, maybe even be the offensive coordinator. But this is, I, as you probably can tell, I like I've been through some adverse things in my life, so I'd like to yes. see how people react. Yes, in adverse situations because I think that's really kind of talks about their character, what they've learned. But a little bit more importantly, how you bounce back, right? I mean, if you get socked in the jaw and you get knocked down, you get back up. And that's what I like to see. And so it's a lot. Of, so if they show up, I guess I'm not saying that they're going to beat Oklahoma, but if they show up and have a competitive game, then, I mean, I'm excited for that program. But if, if they go out and get walloped, you have no pride, man. No pride. That's going to be important to see. I wonder how negative um, the Scott Frost era was his energy, you know, over these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, was it one of those things that the coach was impeding? Because it felt like that he was on the cusp of getting fired many a time. He right. left. Florida, uh, what is it? Central Florida, UCF. UCF. Thank you. In the middle of the night, like Baltimore with the Colts, <laughs> uh, Lane did the same thing to Tennessee back in the day. Mm -hmm. So he left being a big shot, and then he, that karma comes smacking on some people. Um, so that's good to see. Well, I don't know. Him. Well, I, I want to kind of see how that all shook out because I mean, he was he won a national championship for them, right? And so, like, you know, Came for back while home. There, he could do no wrong. So, I was wondering, I mean, like, why it didn't work out? How did it not work out? I mean, was he not getting the kids in there? Were they not paying attention? I mean, it's just interesting. You would think that someone who freaking won a national championship, who's your quarterback, would come back and get those damn guys fired up. App State. App State. Yes, sir. Was, so the next game is USC Fresno State. Just want to see USC. Yeah. I want to see what's what's Chris what's going on excited. there. Is it real? I am. I'm excited about them. And my last game you can't have that Fresno State in the middle of the night on Hello. ESPN yes. letdown. Exactly. Can't because if it. it is, man, it can't happen. It's, now it, it's gonna be like uh Cincinnati was last year. Like Right. And everything just kind of fell in place. They, they, they kind of got a weaker schedule now. All of a sudden, they're going to go undefeated. And now you're going to have to say, whoa, this is the first time we're going to actually have, like, a, a, a competitive Pac-12 team in the uh, in, in, in the Final Four. That would be interesting. So who's my last game? Who is the last game? Thinking about overcoming adversity and tests of will and everything else. Notre Dame. Hello. Notre Dame. And Notre Cal. Dame. Yes, we're gonna see how these guys be? bounce back. Can Marcus Freeman get those guys fired up to go out and like literally rip some folks' heads off and keep the boot on the throat? Can he do it? Can he? Do will it? he do it? No, it's not. Man. I think he will. I think he will. That's it's just, I think he took some some hard hits, and you know, I think it's gonna be hard for. This has nothing to do with Notre Dame game, but okay. thank you. <laughs> you, you. Notre Dame, the he energy, the to, kill. He just wanted to show my wife again. That, that's what it was. Oh, this the, was the, Chris the after emotional. the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. However, it actually wasn't if you would have watched the post game show. The post game show. The post game show on NBC. NBC Sports. And the national broadcasting company. Yes. And Peacock. And you would have seen my little uh hey there you go. Wait, do we have it? What, what? Our producer. Hey Jerry, look at number 90. Alonzo Spell. Oh, you're doing your homework, Perry program. Watch this, watch this. Oh, hey, so, look at this. I bet you McDonald's Porter Pound and Club would taste really good right now, huh? Freddie Famished? Mr. McHungry. <laughs> Here you come, Jerry. Oh. McDonald's new taste of the month is the Quarter Pounder Club Sandwich. A quarter pound of juicy beef with bacon, tomato, mayo, and lettuce. Try it with fries and a Coke for a limited time only. Hey, Jerry, that allows us sure is a little quicker than we thought, huh? Yeah, he's a regular Sammy Speakster, isn't yeah. he? Uh, Mrs. Spellman? Uncle. Okay. Where's Spellman? Where's Zorich? 
<laughs> you know what? Actually, it was it was a Coke commercial. I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot gee. that. Cherie thought she had struck commercial. gold. No, you, you did. I hadn't seen that commercial in like 30,000 years. That's awesome. Alonzo Spellman. Yes. Where is he now? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's 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 a rough situation. I have no idea where it's at, but I was getting yeah. all fired up talking about <laughs> my they thought they awesome found the show. McDonald's I commercial. I, for I you. thought I was in that one, but it, it was a Coke commercial. It's a Coca-Cola commercial, guys. Yeah. Next week. Next week. On the Super 16 poll show. And we will the Chris Zorch Coca-Cola commercial. Coca-Cola commercial. Sugar-free Coke. Hello. Listen, you did it. App State. Hello. Tennessee. Baylor. Kentucky. Ole Miss. Arkansas at number 11. Miami. 10. 9. Michigan State. Oh, there's eight, a number 8. Hmm. 8. Russian Ronnie's. Oklahoma hmm. State Cowboys. <laughs> 7. USC. 6. Oklahoma. 5. Clemson. 4. Michigan. Three, Alabama. Two, Ohio State. And number one, Georgia. Love it. Chris Love it. Zorch. Every week he gives you his top 16. He gives you the five games he tells you he's going to be watching that you should be watching. And before we end the show, he always gives you his final thoughts. But before he does that, we got to pay some bills this week on keeping it 100. Hey, Hall of Famer, first ballot. Wasn't a three time All American like Chris. He was a one time, <laughs> I believe, but they both were Walter Camp All Americans. And I met them both in New Haven. Brian Erlacher will be on keeping it 100 this Wednesday night. Nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have you ever met Brian? I have. So, so here's something interesting. I've been mistaken. So, so tell me how this works out. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, you know, I, I love the fact that I am of two races. My mom was right. white. My dad was black. Yes. Um, sometimes folks don't see that in me, but but that's fine. So, I've been mistaken for Brian Urlacher a bunch of times, right? Really? Okay, which is fine. I mean, I'm five eleven with with high heels on and he's, you know, six, four, whatever, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> but then, then there's been a couple of times where people come to me and said, are you William Perry? Oh boy. And I'm like, what? Like the fridge the fridge. You should a be like, you're, lo you're looking at the fridge. I'm the rookie. I may be <laughs> large, but I'm no dumb cooking. There you go. I would love you. That, 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 that's so interesting. I get Brian Urlacher. How do you get both bear. ends of the spectrum? That's what You're I'm just saying. every bear. That's what I'm saying. Coach man. Dicka. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Coach Dicka. Well, that is your awesome. cigar. I right, see. exactly. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. I'll be sure to tell him about that on Wednesday night. Yes. Uh, that cr we'll play that clip for him. I don't know some laughs with that but chris your final thoughts so i have a real final thought but my almost final thought was like i mean i, I think just the, the way that the sun belt just kind of took over this week i think it just makes it more exciting for college ball and i, I just want to mention that um sam hartman the quarterback for wake forest um had some serious issues a couple weeks ago um, had some like some rare uh, blood clots or something like that. It was really serious. Uh, he was able to bounce back from. He was out for several weeks. Um, came back and beat Vanderbilt in three for three hundred yards. Again, you know, you talk about determination. You talking about overcoming some adversity. Wow. And often we think about you know situations like that where you know you, you talk about something that could be life threatening, and then all that comes in perspective. But then somebody's able to kind of work through that. And, and I'm not saying that in every situation a football player is going to come out on top, but he was able to work through it and really find a way. And now he, he was able to, to get back in the starting position and beat a team and throw for 300 yards, beat an SEC team. I mean, how awesome is that? Unbelievable story. 
And I think me and you obviously are somewhat from the same cloth. This guy is one of the great football players of all time of my life. He doesn't like to get that kind of praise, but I was a fan of Chris, but I also am built from that same cloth where the underdog or the person that has to overcome this adversity and shows the kind of empathy and humanity in this great game. The, the difference between a good football player and a great one usually comes from the love of the game. Do they love the game? If they do love the game, that Coach Eberflus's hits philosophy and loafs philosophy becomes a challenge, not a burden. You want to you want to make yourself the best. I think the coaches that push you to be the best and don't give out awards are always the best. And I think Chris is a testament to that. And I look forward to every Monday night breaking this stuff down with you, the fun, the banter, and also the camaraderie of the rivalries that are built up on this show from Notre Dame fans to Alabama, Clemson, all you fans out there that obviously love this game. And if you don't love Chris Zorich, go to another show. I don't Hello. know what to tell you. because <laughs> I can't wait to see the Coca-Cola commercial. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hope I can it. find it. Yeah. Cherie was able to pull Alonzo Spellman's what that that famous actor was in the the commercial too i go i know this guy he always plays that same kind of guy the italian guy in that commercial i can't remember but chris before we sign off i'd be remiss i would have dropped the ball if i didn't ask you one real quick story do we have a real quick drop i think real we quick. do have a real quick real quick real quick Real, Real quick. quick, Green Bay Packer week, Bears versus Packers. You grew up a Bears fan. You grew up in the city. You know the importance of it. Is there any Packer story you can share? I put you on the spot. So the idea of kind of like what a rivalry is, kind of I've learned um, with the the Bears and Green Bay as a kid watching, right? Just as every other Chicago Bear fan, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember as a kid, it wasn't a kid, maybe it was high school or whatever, but um, watching kind of, I knew what that rivalry meant. So I remember when, I think it was Wright slammed Jim McMahon. Oh, yeah. Right. So, I mean, and that was huge. So that, that was that was big. But then I also remember. It was Harris, James okay, Harris. Okay, Harris. My, my, my James Harris. Well, then I think oh, Wright. Boy is the guy that took Walter Payton over the bench. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are situations that I remember as a kid watching. So I, I knew how crazy and how insane this rivalry was. But when I got to the Bears, you know, I'm like, dude, this is Packer Week. And they're like, yeah, it's just another game. I'm like, are you guys nuts? Dude, this is, these are the Green Bay Packers, man. I'm like, this is crazy. So I always loved having the chance to kind of to understand – well, first of all, as a fan watching, right. this, just imagine, I mean, you know, everybody watching, they're obviously Bear fans, but the idea that you would find yourself in that locker room right. playing, and now you're sitting there going, I remember when I was a kid, I was watching this. And so for me, it was, it was this historical piece. Correct. But the guy, and I was with, with, with Dicker for two years. So, so you had some of it. But but when once that came in, it, like it wasn't emphasized. It was just another game, and it was just kind of weird because it's like, man, this is like, this is what the 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 NFL was was made from, like exactly. the, these types of rivalries. And how could you you know look at this as just another game? So for me, I just always remember kind of as a fan, as a kid watching. And then re remembering kind of what that was like, and then having the chance to actually play for him was just kind of out of my mind. So it was it was just an awesome experience for me. Well, I I'm, put I'm you sorry on... I wasn't real quick, but it was just no. Kind of a really it was cool it's awesome and it's very telling. 
And I think we end there in just saying, uh, I, if it's okay with you, I just want to like put a bow on what you said, because I think it's important to bring it back to coaching. It's so important. I know Lovey came and said what he said. It's about beating Green Bay. And there's something important about that. But what you said was even more important because it's what this great sport is built on rivalry. So it's up to the head coach and his staff and everybody to deliver that message and get out that. Because as you said, you know, Dick was at the end. There was adversity with the McCaskies, all that bullshit and politics were involved as you're coming in, you're having to see, but then you're having this be labeled as just another game. And when it's just another game, what's the culture anyway? Right. Every right. game's just right. another game. Right. So right. what are you doing? You got to understand how to tap into rivalry and pageantry and tradition. If you don't, you're missing the whole enchilada, as they would say. Well, but, you know, and, and think about it. I mean, an, an easy way to do it, let's say uh, Iberflus doesn't really kind of, you know, he's like, ah, I don't know. I mean, just go back and, and just – Play those two clips or, or play the videos from back in the day and exactly. let them understand, like, hey, this isn't just another game. This isn't the Jacksonville Jaguars. This isn't, you know, um, uh, Tampa Bay. I mean, this literally, this is, these are the founding members of this damn great game we, we have here. And this is what it was like. And, and the whole city. And big buckets and all that. Right, the exactly. Whole city, exactly. The whole fan base is living off of this. This isn't two mayors from opposing towns betting on that. This is... Buy a pizza for each other. Yeah, this is reality. Live and die, eat and breathe this game and this rivalry. It matters. And it's up to you to make it matter. Hopefully it does, as well as the college football rivalries continue to matter for those fan bases. I think for some reason, Eberflus gets it. And we'll see as the Bears go Sunday night. Me and Shane will be covering it live with my father, Coach O. Bears Hour Live will be live right after the game in prime time. I know Shane's looking forward to the late night schmooze. (laughs) For Chris Zorich and Cherie, the producer, Alonzo Spellman's McDonald's ad. His cameo. We'll be back next week on the Super 16. Show. I love it. Thanks for watching the Super 16 Poll Show with Chris Zorich. Like, subscribe, and comment. This has been a special presentation of the Tape Never Lies Network. Performance over poly.